Today, I will be painting Nelly the barmaid in under 90 minutes. Then the entirety of the cosmos is accessible to each and every individual mind connected to the great mind, the great spirit. Welcome back to the channel, collectors. So in this painter in 90 minutes series, I'm painting one zombicide hero figure per day for as long as this lockdown period ends, alright? So I hope to continue this even after the lockdown period. So this gives me an opportunity to have a set of nicely painted miniatures so that after this lockdown period, I can have a game of zombicide with the people I like and love. Alright, today we'll be painting Nelly the Barmaid. Today's topic will be discussing satin finishes and glossy finishes. So, why do I pick this topic today? Because Nelly has the same colour for the cloak and the armour. Both are black, but then the thing is you have to portray both of them pretty differently. So I'm going to show you guys my technique and how I differentiate these two different surfaces even though they are using the same colour. Alright, so if you're ready, let us begin. Okay, welcome back to another 90 minute painting challenge. Today we'll be painting Nelly the Barmaid from Zombicide Black Plague. This is the ultimate um, survivor version of her, which means she survived the first Black Plague and now she's back with more armor and stronger than ever. Okay, so in today's video, what I'll be discussing more or less would be how to differentiate materials. As you guys can see, Nelly is cloaked in a, in a black cloak and she also has this black uh, black armor plate on her chest and in various parts of uh, this model so it's gonna pose a challenge because now we have a black vest and black armor plates so this model might look a little bit boring and today's purpose of this video is I'm gonna illustrate to you guys how to differentiate black metals which is probably gloss versus a black satin cloak which is uh, probably made of silk okay so first and foremost um, how these two materials differ from each other is that these two materials are uh, one one of course is gloss and one is satin and because by nature of being gloss by nature of being glossy the glossy material will tend to have more highlight color the value distribution will tend to be more highlight rather than mid-tone whereas the satin color will have more mid-tone than highlight which i'll be demonstrating during this video right now we are just placing the shadow colors so placing the shadow colors um, between the metals and the satin cloak which Nelly is wearing is not much difference we're just gonna place large areas of this as per normal I'm starting with a black prime and I'm making sure that this entire layer is as uh, large and generous as possible because I don't want too much of this model to be just the black primer because being, being a model based in real life Mod, the, the color black doesn't really materialize very often in real life of course it's always influenced by some degree of ambient light which in this case is going to be the cool moonlight and some uh, off, off screen orange uh, glow which is from a flame probably a burning village um, I'm planning to place it on the bottom left hand side okay as you guys can see right now what I'm doing is I'm placing the the influence of the orange light from the bottom left from the box uh, from the illustration which was provided for Nelly it seems like the sword is some kind of enchanted sword and it's it's glowing so it I'm gonna give it an orange glow also. So the whole left hand side of the model is going to have a very warm orange glow. Okay. So as you guys can see at this stage right now, 
there is not much separation because what I'm doing right now is I'm slowly progressing into the mid tone. However, if you look very closely, what I'm doing is that I'm being a lot more generous with the mid tone for for the satin surfaces, which is the cloak, and I'm being a bit more controlled with the mid tone color for the chest armor, which is going to be a form of black armor. Okay. One tip that I would give you guys for speed painting is that always have a wet, uh, always have a hair dryer handy, so that in between colors when you wanna have a sharp transition, transition, it's always better to have a hair dryer dry the surface before you plonk on the next color, because uh, if you plonk on the next color before you dry, there's a chance that the previous color will influence the subsequent color. But if that's what you're going for for wet blending, uh, by all means. Okay, but in this in this uh, model, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to be a little bit more controlled with the shapes. That's why I tend to dry pretty frequently between the colors. If you want to see the black armor done in more in a more in depth fashion, you can check out the link on the top right corner right now. We're gonna place a cut there, and the links will be in the show note for reflective black metal okay the version of this black armor that Nelly is wearing is a uh, shortened down and uh, a bridge version of this armor I'm gonna give uh, Nelly uh, th this normal color leather red leather gauntlets so we can break the monoton monotony apart we are also intending to give Nelly a uh, a gold emblem on her chest, and the trims of the armor will also be gold in color. Okay, so what I'm doing now is I'm base coating the gold areas. I'm using a mix of red oxide and black from the Chimera range in a range in a ratio of about 50-50 to base coat the, the gold areas and I'm also using uh, yellow oxide to give her that tan her signature tan uh, skirt that she wears so right now I'm focusing on uh, just base coating everything and I'm gonna give her a basic skin tone so how I mix the basic skin tone would be I use um, Joe Sonia skin tone I mix it with a bit of red and a bit of um, olive green from Joe Sonia range to also just balance out the red and this gives um, by by using olive green because olive green is by nature not as not as uh, saturated as uh, pure red from the Chimera range it will give the skin a pinkish finish without <laughs> making her look like a lobster if you refer to the diagram right here you guys can see pure red is on the extreme end of the color wheel whereas olive green is somewhere in between yellow and green and it's not as saturated that's why you will still get some residual red showing through in theory if you use a absolute saturation of pure green and pure red should come up with a very neutral grey colour but of course this is in theory so right now I'm painting in the reflections onto the armour as you guys can see the I'm because it's the gloss surface right here I'm pushing the highlights highlight area even further so what I'm trying to say is that the highlight area covers more of the mid-tone for gloss areas that's my observation whereas for satin areas the highlight tends to cover a lot less of the mid-tone areas so right now we are 
currently in day day three if i'm not wrong day three of this uh one mini a day painting challenge i'm really heartened by my i'm really heartened by my um, progress because um putting all the minis together this this video is gonna this video is post recorded now so this this video is recorded at day six but putting all the minis together uh i'm really really very happy because they they aren't really good in close up but the thing is when you look uh, at them at a distance they they serve a really really nice purpose and when you play them on the tabletop they're gonna look really awesome and painting all of them in a very thematic fashion where all of them have a orange glow somewhere on the model to show that they are trying to help a burnt village and i think putting all of them together is it's just it's just gonna be very very satisfying when it finishes Okay, so now we are one. We we are we have one hour of the of this challenge remaining. Nelly is relatively easier to paint relative to uh, say for example, Silas and and uh, what's the dwarf's name? Uh, Samson, the, the dwarf, because uh, all the colors are are quite limited. She she tends to just have uh, just blues and blacks and some oranges and some key areas such as uh, the face and the skirt uh, is done differently uh, in different colors where, but then the rest of the model is relatively uh, similar so it gives me an opportunity to, to go into a lot more detail As you guys can see the gloss surface tends to go to a higher value also so that's the second difference between satin and gloss finishes in all in all my painting i like to make sure that um, every single component reflects the the lighting situation accordingly so i'm having this uh, ambient cool light coming from uh, top right and then um, this orange warm light coming from the bottom left so every single component will need to reflect this while I'm painting the gold right now you will see in the later stages I will put a little bit of this orange ambient light from the bottom so that every single every single component uh, sings a very coherent tune that communicates this to the viewer at the end of the day i like to say this that you have to treat the viewer like an outsider where the viewer does not understand what character is this what uh, what they are wearing but the human mind can understand shapes and forms and lights so you want to, to make sure that the miniature is readable and as understandable to the viewer as possible so coherency is one of those tips and tricks that you can employ to make sure that the entire model is immediately or easily understandable by the viewer. So right now I'm painting in the highlights for the red, uh, sorry for the gold. More detailed version of this gold NMM recipe can be found in the video on the top right hand corner right now okay the links will also be in the show notes if you want to look at how i paint this uh, realistic nmm go of course this is a very abridged version of this i will go a lot i'll go into a lot more detail in that tutorial which i highly recommend you to have a look So right now I'm painting the glowing sword. No idea why the sword is glowing, but uh, I guess it also communicates one thing. Uh, you can interpret it as a glowing sword, or you can interpret her as being very close to the flame, where the entire sword is only reflecting the light 
from the flame. So I guess both interpretations are fine. Okay, we are halfway into the challenge right now. I'm trying to improve the readability. So I'm just dotting out little details such as the the boats on the armor. So as you can see right now, the gloss armor stands out a lot more than the satin cloak on her head. So I would say that the value distribution of this these uh, highlights tend to be more, yeah, more towards high, uh, more towards highlight for gloss, less towards highlight for, uh, less towards, uh, more towards mid tone for satin finishes. In addition, the highlight. The highlight color for the satin finishes tend to be a lot more saturated, whereas the gloss areas tend to have a higher value and lower higher value and lower saturation for the color used. As you guys can see, uh, I'm <laughs> I'm really taking my time with Nelly. Nelly Nelly is a lot more manageable than many of the other managers which I like because it gives me a lot more time to, to put in a lot more detail and make sure that the definition is a lot better relative to the rest of the other managers as you guys can see I even have time to texture the I even have time to texture the, the glove the gauntlet This texturing method can be seen in a lot more detail in this uh, uh, dog fur painting tutorial right here on the right hand side now. So this painting challenge that I'm, I'm going for is I'm going to paint one miniature in 90 minutes every day as a warm up to my day so that at the rest of the day I can continue painting and I'm trying to experiment and learn things. Hopefully within these 90 minutes, uh, I'm training something. Because every day when I'm painting, I, I have an objective in mind. When I'm trying to learn something. So this, this gives me the opportunity to try out something. And to be disciplined with my time. So I, <laughs> I don't over indulge myself. When I'm uh, when I'm experimenting, so one common mistake many uh, beginner painters tend to do is that they highlight the strands of hair rather than highlighting the hair as a volume. So if you see how I highlighted Nelly's hair, I highlighted it as a as a partial orb rather than the individual strands where I'm painting the while painting the the fringe. Okay, right now I'm focusing on the readability function of the face of Nelly. So right now I'm placing the shadows, focusing on the eyes and the nose. And then I'm just cleaning up these shadows so that the shadows don't look so drastic. In subsequent videos, I might even place, I, I might even do a one hour video to, to show how I can improve on miniatures after this one and a half hour painting session. Because these 90 minute painting sessions can be quite hectic and there's uh, almost no time for me to go into the very fine details. All I can do is uh, to have the broad strokes accurately illustrated so that the miniature is readable at a tabletop distance. So with Nelly's face, I'm also faced with a little bit of challenge because her fringe overhangs her face. 
that will result in a cast shadow and I'm also gonna paint a bit of cast shadow on her face as well as on the, her little uh, skirt there so on the point of making the miniature readable I'm exaggerating the features on the nose to make sure that on first look the viewer is able to see that this is a face So I'm about done with my conversation for today about finishes satin versus gloss. I hope you found this uh, this format useful so that I don't need to go too much in depth with uh, the colors and I can talk about some concepts which probably can be useful to many of you guys. It's, uh, these videos are a lot longer and they take a lot of time to produce. So I would really appreciate if, if you really think that I, appreciate, I, I deserve it, give me a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel because this helps a lot. And if possible, get on to the Patreon and become a Patreon today. I understand that, uh, if, you can't, you can't, if, you, if you can't afford, but of course, if you, if you can, it would be really, really nice. As you can see right now, I am starting to push the highlight for the satin finish on the cloak just a little bit more. Oops, out of camera there. As you guys can see, that highlight color is a lot more saturated versus that glint on the chest armor. So usually at the last part of this uh, painting challenges, I'm always focused about read on readability. So what I'm doing about readability is I'm always cleaning up the shapes, cleaning up the highlights, cleaning up the shadows, so that uh, on first look, the shapes are at least correct. While the blends are horrible, the shapes are at least correct. pushing the highlights here and there a little bit more because well the blends are horrible blends are blends to me tend to be a, a function of time the more time you put in the smoother the blend can be but at a very bare minimum the shapes and the, the highlights mid tones and the shadow placements in terms of shape needs to be correct course presentation is very important the aesthetics of the piece that's why I tend to uh, paint the bases black so that when when they are being played they don't feel unfinished at all so just some pointers for today uh, always Differentiate your materials. Don't highlight everything as if they were the same material or satin materials or semi-gloss materials. They tend to have more mid-tone area to highlight ratio whereas the, the glossy areas tend to have more highlight compared to the mid-tone and the color of the highlights tend to be different also. The highlight colors for mid-tones tend to be more saturated Whereas for glossy surfaces, they tend to be a lot more uh, desaturated and higher in value. So I hope you found this uh, video useful. And this is the final product of Nelly the Barmaid from Zombie Side. Okay, I hope to see you in the next painting challenge. 
and I hope to see you take up this painting challenge yourself. Alright. See you in the next video. So, I hope you found this video tutorial useful. It's uh, definitely a useful skill for me because if you are painting a large model with using the same colors, you want to make sure that the materials are well separated in terms of the distribution of the mid-tone and the highlight, highlight mid-tone shadows, and so on and so forth. Even texturing can be a method of differentiating the different materials, even if they are the same color. All right, so if you think I deserve it, please subscribe right now, please. Subscribe right now. Alright? Click the like button, click the bell notification icon, smash that all the way through so you know when we post the next videos and you won't miss a video from us ever again. Hopefully, YouTube says it's working, so I gotta believe that it's working. Alright? So uh, we post videos on Mondays, Wednesdays, Fridays, and Saturdays. But because I'm producing so many uh, daily miniature paintings, uh, I'm pretty confident that we are gonna post much more often than that. Alright? So if you really want to support the channel and if you can afford it, please head on to our Patreon now. I would really appreciate if you become a Patreon. $2 Patreons get extended play footage for many of our videos and also you guys get to have exclusive content if you guys go up to the higher tiers. Alright? I hope that all of us get to become better painters together and I hope to see you in the next video. See you!